Hey everybody, it's Sunday afternoon, it is time to continue on the Ram Revival here, got to the lake because of Easter last week, but nonetheless, here we are, I believe, part 7, and we are going to tackle the intake manifold. Like I always say, there's multiple ways to approach this to get your engine out. My thoughts were with the exhaust manifolds, which again went surprisingly smooth aside from that one bolt on the Y pipe, uh, which I've since picked up some angle wrenches that I think will take care of that. Keeping the intake manifold on, if I had to break out the impact, I could visualize, you know, rust, dust, and debris kind of flying up. One less thing to have to worry about entering the engine, so it's just good practice to go ahead and tackle it in that manner. Now, I've kind of made a little bit of progress, nothing major. I clean all the time. I never know if you can tell, but I do try. <laughs> and, uh, needless to say, you might see some more blue masking tape again. This kind of seems overkill, but rest assured, if you're pulling your motor, you go back to connect it, you know, an X number of days or weekends or whatever, you might not quite remember things. Similarly, uh, if you pull your motor, have it rebuilt, or you get something from another truck type of a situation, <laughs> there runs a good risk that you're not going to remember where things go. Luckily, the harnesses themselves sort of have a limiting factor. For example, here on the passenger side, we've got injectors 2, 4, 6, and 8. It would be really hard for you to cross, you know, the injector harnesses for four and six. Six and eight you could conceivably do. I mean, they're in the same ballpark. It's something simple like that uh, that you want to be leery of. So I've labeled some things. Again, it's important to make note of the routing because at some point you're going to have to put this all back together. Now, first thing I want to point out is right here. This is our heater hose. Uh, it's going to come off right beside the thermostat housing, uh, which I'm afraid we may break those bolts off. The good news is we're pulling the motor, we're going to pull the intake. But in a normal situation, let's say you're just replacing the thermostat and you fall off this point, that would not be good because then you too would probably be pulling your intake. Uh, that said, it is a simple clip. That said, the way it's oriented, it's very difficult to get in there. Uh, so we're going to get it out of the way because it completely it transverses into this little bit of convoluted tubing and right here that i do not have labeled because there's no space to do so it is our uh, coolant temperature sensor your water temperature sensor whatever you want to call it it is located right here now paying attention to the heater hose it enters the convoluted tubing presumably to protect from heat from the valve cover that's honestly the only thing i could figure uh, there's really not sharp edges on it but maybe it's twofold, protects from a little bit of heat, and similarly it would protect from chafing if they thought that might be a concern as you drive down the road. Uh, if I swing the PCV valve port off, you can see right here, two clamps. That's not me, it's not like I patched it or something crazy. If you feel right here, you're going to tell there's a fitting in there. You know, this is soft hose, this is something hard under it. That, I believe, would be done from the factory, so you could service, you know, your heater core, flush it out, you know, and you should be draining and flushing your heater core and your fluids. <laughs> but, uh, moving on, there is a clip right there. That's going to be our third valve cover bolt. And if I lift up on it for you, you can kind of see what I'm referencing. That was, again, just done for routing at this point, and then travels up and to the firewall. It's important to note, your heater hose from this port right here goes to the passenger side entry to your cabin, your heater core, whatever you want to call it. Uh, from the front of the vehicle, it would be the left-hand side, you know, your passenger side. The other heater hose right beside it snakes all the way. I've got it currently here, but it's the one that goes into the tube that we've removed from the water pump. So don't cross your heater lines, that is the correct routing. This PCV valve, again, it has two worm gear clamps. That was from the factory. You've got one here and then one on the valve itself. That one goes to your cold air intake or your standard intake tube. Uh, if you've got the factory deal, we kind of plug in right here on the hat. There would be this strange port that's not connected to anything. That's what that is. Uh, if it's cold air, it kind of depends where they position it. You might have to lengthen it, may need to shorten it. Uh, you get the idea. Coming in, we need to make note of the sensors. Uh, so right here at the top, and this is going to be a huge thing. This is kind of our uh, intake air temperature sensor. And if you're thinking, wait, is that going into the intake manifold? That's strange, isn't it? Usually in the uh, you know intake tube somewhere. And you would be 100% correct. This is a questionable decision by the factory. 
I'm not sure what they were thinking. I don't know if it helped with emissions. I don't know if it helped kind of bump up economy or decrease fuel burn or something. But needless to say, at this point in the intake, it's going to be a considerably warmer sensor that the computer's getting than it would be if it was over here in the factory intake tube, in a cold air intake, anything like that. A lot of times, even like with late model cars that kind of come equipped and you switch it out to an aftermarket version, you'll note that they change the location of the IAT a little bit to get colder temperature readings. Colder temperature readings, you're gonna result in more power, more efficiency, if you will. Uh, so if you swap out from the kegger, uh, pretty much anything that I think is still on the market, you're gonna need to retrofit this. Let's go ahead and pull it off. You can see it's just a simple clip right there. Uh, the face looks like so, sort of the yellow color. And again, that is our sensor right here. So that is something that is going to be beneficial to move if you swap from the kegger. And uh, coming in, the way the fuel injector harnesses work, if you see, let me try to swivel my light. I'll just pick it up. The red clip right there, that is a safety clip, okay? Trying to get a hand free for you. The way these are going to be removed, I wanna make note though before we do so, the factory actually had markings on them, this kind of white faded tape, and then right here it's like burned completely off from the heat over the years. If you ever terminate motors or anything, you know, there's like the tape, little packets that you buy, and it's got, you know, like your one through nine or one through 12 or whatever. Factory actually did have these harnesses marked. <laughs> it's just a deal where most of them have suffered the fates of heat and time, so you can't really see it. But the clips on the passenger side all face to the front of the vehicle. On the driver's side, if you're looking at the uh, fuel injectors right here below the rail, you'll note that the red safety clip is facing towards the firewall. That's just something to note. Granted, you'll probably tell when you plug it in, but uh, one of those neat little uh, details we can point out. So I'm hoping you can see this because I'll highlight it with this one. The way you're gonna need to remove these, and by the way, I would advocate that you relabel these. I'm going to do so after I pulled them. <laughs> Reason so, it's not because I'm cocky. I actually came in and I looked down the barrel. You can actually read the two on this one, if it would focus. Trust me, do you see the two kind of right there? That was present on all of these. This one would have been four where you see that adhesive residue, it's gone. But uh, the way you will remove these, hopefully you can see it decent, is you slide up. Did you hear the click? That means the safety is released. And then right there, above the safety, there's a black tab that I'm articulating. We simply press in on that, slide it off, and there you go. Again, what I noted here, every harness, every fuel injector, I should say, is going to have the green with an orange tracer, and then they each have a different secondary wire. So that's kind of going to be your power and presumably your fire signal. But I'll run through. In fact, I could probably do this pretty easy. Slide this one up, press down. She's off, coming in. It's just a deal, I'm trying to get it to where you can sort of see what I'm doing. Uh, if I come way back here, I'm just gonna slide up, press in, remove. You get the idea, you understand how that works. <laughs> now, uh, what we get to next, we've covered the coolant temperature sensor, we have covered the intake air temperature, we've covered how to remove the fuel injector harness clips. What we run into at this point is a couple more sensors and we want to shift our attention over here to the driver's side. So, trying to make sure I don't crush my power steering cooler as I shimmy around. Still sitting on the core support, if you're curious. So you see the same thing here, the clips that just face towards the firewall as noted. I'm going to pull this shop rag off and right here, the front sensor on the throttle body, kind of behind the screwdriver, that is your MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure. The one in the middle, kind of the white plug right there, blue light, that's gonna be your throttle position sensor. In the back, IAC, that is your idle air control, all right? Uh, I can't really see how I'm going to remove that one just yet, but uh, these are simple. Uh, you've got the tab, let me stick this back. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Uh, in this case, you've got a tab right here where my thumb is. 
we press down, we slide off. It's that simple. Uh, same thing here with the IAC. You always on these connections just feel around for something that presses. If it does, that is your ticket. So uh, we come in. I'll get these uh, harnesses off as well on the driver's side. I'll get number eight on the passenger side. I want to point out the routing here. The top port on our intake manifold is going to be this hose here that runs to the brake booster. This is our heater hose. I just have it tucked up out of the way. Coming in below that, directly below uh, the one that runs to the brake booster, it's going to be right there, if you can trace my finger. It runs up over here, it enters the PCV valve. So the lower manifold port will enter the driver's side PCV valve cover. If you see kind of that braided line, I'm running my finger across it right there until it came out of focus. That is our fuel line. The fuel enters the fuel rail at this point right here. That's why I wanted to get that throttle position sensor out of the way. This is just like on our transmission lines. We have our safety right here. We're going to need to pull that off. I realize you can't see too well, but that sucker is on there. <laughs> might, uh, might need a screwdriver or two hands. But you're going to have to pull that off, then we're going to come. We're going to utilize our little quick disconnects. And that will get the fuel line off before we do that. This is critical. I think some early magnums may not have had the bleed valve, but right again below your throttle position sensor, you see that uh, spearmint, the wintergreen, the mark, this threads off. It's like a valve stem cap almost. And when I take it off, <laughs> you will see, it looks like a valve stem. It looks like something, you know, on your bicycle tire, right? Well, that is a Schrader valve, and that is how we're going to bleed the fuel pressure. There's no harm in disconnecting the fuel injectors from the harness. There is harm if we then started trying to lift them out. Uh, this is still pressurizing. I don't quite remember the specs for a Magnum fuel injection now. It's like 58. These are probably 35 to 60, maybe in the 40s or 50s range. Bottom line, that fuel rail isn't that big. And when you've got even 35 or 45 PSI, that's going to come out with a lot of force. That's why over here I've tried to gather up all the tools I think I'll need. That's why we've got a few more. That sock, the black thing with the red stripe, that's what I'm going to have there. I'm going to use that Vera screwdriver. We're going to press down. I'm going to try to throw some rags down and then hold the sock over it because fuel will literally be spraying out of that valve. Uh, that's important, though, to contain the mess because then when we do go to pull out the injectors, you're not going to have a problem. <laughs> so, moving on from there, I am of the mindset... I'm going to try to grab a socket here. It's my half inch. I'm kind of thinking... Um, I've kind of realized this as I was going through here. I was kind of shocked there was so much metric. I think my 9 16th socket might be kind of stripping out. <laughs> that's why everything was coming out as 14 millimeter for me. But this is truly a hodgepodge. It's a blend. This isn't old school where there's nothing metric. This isn't modern where there's nothing SAE. Uh, pretty much everything on this engine, it would be just like the small block and the duster. You know, a 360 from, you know, the late 60s or 70s type of a deal. A 318 from the same era. An LA engine, if you will. Magnum, very, very similar to the LA. And I genuinely believe virtually every bolt on the engine is going to be SAE, particularly if it's old, okay? It's so like the water pump, the oil pan, everything like that is going to be SAE. Now, when you come in and we might start seeing metric is potentially some of the later introductions like fuel injection, throttle body, the accessory brackets, those I believe are 100% metric. And that's again, because that was a later addition. It's not something that was pulled from the parts catalog and adapted to fit type of a situation. So uh, needless to say, when we get some of this stuff out of our way, we're gonna tackle these intake manifold bolts. And I wanna say they're all gonna be half inch and uh, that will be a present, uh, pleasant change for yours truly. Uh, I think there's 12 bolts. Don't hold me to that. There's still a lot of stuff in our way, sadly. Uh, coming in here, I'm not quite sure what's up with the throttle body, in part because yours truly doesn't use cruise control. None of the old cars have cruise control. So I kind of throw me for a loop. <laughs> but, uh, I know there's a cable back here that would look like a traditional throttle cable. If you're accustomed to old school Mopars and you see three lines coming in, 
he would say this is your throttle cable. Thing is, whenever I come in and articulate the throttle valves there, okay, this one's actually pulling. This one's coming forward, and unless there's like a weird ball crank type of thing, I'm inclined to say that this one, since it's pulling, would tie in with the depression of the gas pedal to accelerate. That makes me believe that this would be the throttle cable, and that might be the throttle valve going back to the transmission, and then I'm thinking, since this runs over here to something I'm unfamiliar with, that's probably cruise control, and then it also, in the same braided loom, there's this smaller black plastic tubing, and that runs into a vacuum port. Again, yours truly, I don't mess with cruise control. It's not, not something I've repaired, not something I've replaced, not something people show up and tell me to install on their car. Uh, so I'm thinking that's what that is. I think that's probably correct, but the bottom line is every single one of these has a similar little ball-style de detent clip type of a deal designed, and we're just going to need to probably pull up and off. Might even need a screwdriver to kind of pry it, but we'll need to get all that out of the way. We need to get the fuel injector harnesses out of our way. The front bolts here, like for our throttle cable brackets, want to say those are like 5 16 if I remember right. Uh, here on the throttle body, let's just check this. That looks like SAE to me. I think that's half inch, so that's cool. I was afraid they might have gone to metric with a throttle body, you know. Uh, that probably would have been, what, late 80s, early 90s type of thing, so I guess it was, it was still old school. <laughs> but uh, we're going to try to pull the intake, and then my thoughts on this Instead of disconnecting the engine from the transmission and the engine from the frame rails and everything, I kind of want to have the cherry picker in to lift before I do that, just as a safety precaution. And in order to do that, I'm not going to pick this up by the aluminum throttle body bores, right? Uh, we could pull the throttle body, like if there's a carb and a cast iron intake, that's where I'd lift. I'm not going to do that. This will also allow me a much lower pickup point. I mean, look at the height of the kegger, okay? This is the valley right here below the intake manifold, below the water thermostat. <laughs> and the kegger comes up pretty, pretty tall. Uh, so by lowering that, I'm thinking that might be a way we could still keep the hood on when we pull the motor. But uh, there are also some fuel injector bolts, but I'll try to kind of come in once I've cleaned this up a little bit. I think that's about it. So what I will probably be doing off camera is getting these harnesses pulled, some of them labeled, uh, coming in, bleeding fuel pressure, hopefully that goes well. Probably want safety glasses and gloves when you do that. And uh, seeing if I can maybe figure out how that IAC is connected back there. But nothing crazy, nothing, nothing too discouraging. Hopefully this sort of walks you through the process and then again I will come in and kind of try to highlight things as we go. I have grabbed a couple more tools. Like I said, uh, I believe every single thing on the uh, throttle body, like in terms of a connector, you know, sensor type of a thing, it's not just standard, it's not slotted, it's not Phillips, it should be T25, yeah, that fits like a glove, the old VHA drivers. Uh, so T25 on pretty much everything. Probably don't have to take those off just yet. Again, we'll kind of feel it out, but I am equipped if we need to. Uh, also, this is fairly deep, you know, like with these fuel rails in place and everything, it's going to be hard to access. So for our Stavilla Ratchet, I've grabbed some long 3 8 extensions. Uh, for the small tiny bolts, which again, I do think were 5 16 I grabbed the Heiko, <laughs> actually. I haven't gotten to use this guy much, so I'm excited to see how it does real world. Uh, big long Vera extension on it right now. But again, I did document all this in my notepad right there the other night. I've tagged a bunch of it. That's not stupid if it helps you. So go ahead and uh, do what you need to do. Picture schematics cell phone pictures that you label, whatever works for you, make it happen and do it ahead of time. With that said, I'm ready to get dirty here and uh, start making some headway. So I'll check back with you if we run into any issues, any uh, pickup points, and we'll see how we're doing. All right, I've got all the uh, fuel injector harnesses removed, but a little progress point for you. Right there, that was just a weather pack connector for the IAC, which was beautiful. I saw that tab sticking off in the background, and I thought, hmm. <laughs> so, like I said, if you can't uh, press, sometimes you can pull. As soon as I did, I was like, that's weather pack, and uh, we got her off. So with that said, I'm going to continue on here, probably start tackling that mess down there, try to get our uh, heater hose disconnected and out of our way. All right, so down here in the belly of the beast, as you can see right here, use the Knipex alligators, got this pulled up. 
pick tool right there made quick work of it. The hose is still in good shape. But again, now we can trace this sucker back and just get it out of our freaking way, which is going to be so freaking nice. We'll just leave it there for now, but just getting that out of the way opens up a ton of access there. Now, I've already gone ahead. This is our coolant temperature sensor. You can kind of see the structure of it right there. Uh, be leery of that when you're pulling the intake manifold. Uh, it's easier to get out on the bench, but you know, be mindful of it when you're lifting up. I think what I'm ready to do now is probably start, uh, I need to label that, of course, the CTS, <laughs> and then probably start uh, pulling the vacuum lines, seeing how we're doing there, bleed the fuel still, disconnect all of our throttle connections, and go to town. Note from here, though, we can finally see the distributor back there. <laughs> so, exciting times. Uh, that's it. I will continue on, update you as needed. Okay, so real quick as I was trying to get this harness out of the way, I realized we had convoluted tubing running down here. I thought I disconnected this, I have not. This is the factory signal to the coil. And so there's a pressure point right there. We're gonna pull down. Again, it's routed right here from the factory through that convoluted tubing inside the coil. Uh, towards where we come off here towards the tensioner pulley mount and then it runs up here to the top side of the passenger valve cover So gonna get that out continue on snaking our way making headway All right, so I've got this off well that wasn't an issue and then I realized you could collapse and crush the convoluted tubing I don't like to do that particularly with something important like a coil wire So I assumed over here we probably had Torx fasteners are actually number two Phillips so you can either remove those screws and take the coil bracket off, basically just unbolt the coil if you will. Or you can actually come in and you can pull presumably these two bolts, there may be one down below, uh, to get the tensioner pulley. I'll tackle that later, but while it's fresh on my mind, wanted to make sure I pointed that out. All right, so those tensioner bolts right there, I think are gonna be 9 16, so uh, don't have that socket while I'm down here in the engine bay before we crawl out. <laughs> Wanna make some headway, so I've come in. Again, uh, I do believe this would have to be like I was thinking. So this would be our throttle valve to the transmission. The throttle cable itself would be this one. Again, it wraps around. This is sort of counter to everything you know from old engines. <laughs> you know, having the throttle cable run across the engine bay and over, but uh, it is what it is. These are filthy, sadly. But uh, essentially, again, the inside tack right there, that stud, to get these off, you just kind of pull, push forward, and, you know, maybe tilt it up, it'll come right off. The one that I have left is cruise control, and I don't know that I can film this. I'm pretty sure I can't. Uh, but basically you would want to articulate the throttle body and press forward, which I kind of need my other hand to do, but you can see it right there. <laughs> that will be our cruise control cable. And essentially if I had two hands, what I would be doing is just pushing that forward and then it'll simply just clip off. Uh, at that point, I think we're ready to probably get this bracket out of our way so we can better access the vacuum lines. I'm trying not to tear those if possible. Uh, so. Again, I believe 5 sixteenths, <laughs> might be mistaken there, uh, but uh, you'd kind of think this would be where they might go metric, but uh, since those are half, I don't know. I mean, and the sockets can be worn, what would it be, eight millimeter would probably be really close, but you'd have one bolt here, one bolt here below this vacuum line, which runs into the convoluted tubing, and then down all through this area. So we're trying to kind of clear that out so we can assess everything better. And then right back, there, don't know that you can see it too great, but where my index finger is, you've got another small bolt just like these that we'll need to get out of the way. Alright, so the cruise control actually pops off pretty easy with two hands. Again, the cruise will be your small one that's got the vacuum line running over here underneath the battery tray. Throttle cable runs back over there, presumably through the firewall and into the cabin. And then, of course, our throttle valve for the transmission is going to drop down and descend somewhere underneath the firewall and <laughs> towards the tranny. Uh, so, what we're at now, we need to get rid of this massive convoluted tubing vacuum, vacuum line so we have better access to the throttle brackets. Uh, I'm hoping... yeah, we got it. I started to charge the GoPro so I could wear it on my head. I thought that might work good for this, but I didn't get to, so uh, we're making do with what we've got. But, getting this out of the way, let's go ahead and cycle it through. And keep in mind, anything that's been bent this long is going to fall back roughly into place when you do reinstall or whatever you're doing. Uh, but it's still smart to label the stuff. So we're going to come in, slide this out. I'm trying to see what all we've got. All right, so now I can see that vacuum line, and it's going, I believe, up. 
and over to that vacuum tree, which means I can hopefully move it and swing it over there out of my way, out of my mind, opening up access to the freaking intake manifold bolts. That's why we're doing all this. But uh, anything else I can do while filming with you, let's take a better look now maybe at this. We come in, this is the one from the cruise control, feeds into a little Y. I'll try and get the Astro over here for you. So that's slightly better. <laughs> but this wire right here is the cruise control. And then we've sort of got like an adapter between the plastic connections. And then right here we're going into the intake. And that is quite, <laughs> quite seized. So I'll uh, probably need two hands for that one. But uh, we'll come in and continue making headway. I try to clean as I can again, but you know, do what you will. Uh, so we'll come in, we'll continue moving on this direction, see what we get ourselves into. Alright, so quick update before anything crazy happens. Uh, using a little slotted screwdriver, I'm able to pretty much pry any of these vacuum connections off. I'm trying to get better access to this one. I don't want to break anything, that plastic tree. I don't ever know how hard it's going to be to find Y fittings. Uh, so I'm trying to get better access to that so we can pull this portion of the vacuum line off and back over here, I think would be the best way to do it. Uh, also, I've got my 516 socket here, so it's doing this job again. Bolt one, bolt two, and then over around here, bring the camera strap out of the way, bolt three right up there. Uh, so that is going to allow me to get the throttle body off, which I think is going to open up space. Then maybe we'll tackle the fuel rail. Mainly though, this bracket portion I wanted to assess and get you know ready to get out of my life because I need to move things back and it's just turning into a jumble of wires back there. So uh, that's where we stand now. It's also pretty dirty down there. We've kind of opened up access to a few things, but uh, anyway, we'll continue progressing. If anything happens interesting, I'll let you know. Uh, the little Heiko's doing pretty good for me though on that front. Got the long Vera extension that locks, which is nice because this is not somewhere you want a socket to come off. <laughs> so anyway, making headway, we'll be back in just a little bit. A little combination right there is pretty sweet. The Zyclops extension, that plastic sleeve that you probably think looks cheap and stupid, that allows it to basically spin in my hand without issue. I've been using the Stavilla quarter inch, which is not padded back over there. I uh, hadn't again gotten used to Heiko much. Zero issues with it. it was a nice little ratchet. Uh, that said, we've got the bracket off. I've got my bolts kind of aligned up there how I want them. Uh, the problem is, with the uh, throttle connections and everything still in place, uh, and the fuel rails, we kind of hit a point of resistance. I'm just going to go ahead. I thought I could probably leave it on uh, the manifold, even though we're pulling the manifold. I guess we'll just go ahead and get the throttle body out of here. So uh, we're going to want to break just these four bolts free. Uh, they will be fairly long, but I'm assuming we won't run into any issues up there. If so, we'll just go to a shallow socket. But four half-inch bolts on the throttle body. That should open this up, allow us to get the bracket out of the way, get that disconnected from the bracket, get the bracket out, reinstall the hardware, with the bracket and then have better access to the fuel rail bolts because as you can see that fuel rail bolt there this bracket kind of is uh, tight quarters with that anyway so that was my logic again you could go about this multiple ways this is just how I'm tackling it style villa ratchet it is uh, such a good ratchet I mean listen to how quiet it and the knee pros are honestly probably uh, my two favorite just like standard use ratchets nothing crazy just run-of-the-mill stuff you know they're both just fan freaking tastic so uh, long ago I'd read people complaining about the style villa ratchets and I thought you know what I'm gonna try this one this is the I think the quarter inch one was actually the first one I brought in without the padded handle. I liked it well enough to get this one and then I thought so much of those two <laughs> I actually came in and uh, we grabbed the big uh, flex head, which was my first ever flex head ratchet. And uh, that's uh, fantastic freaking ratchets. But if you're curious why I don't really film myself doing the work, it's because you would have stupid angles like that where you're primarily looking at my hand and can't see what I'm doing anyway. But again, those all four broke free. Uh, zero issues there. We'll kind of get a better look at the IAC connection back there when we remove it. <laughs> so slowly but surely, progress is being made. All right, Virgin 5.2. Throttle body's never been off. No spacers, nothing crazy. Uh, not even been pulled to be cleaned, really. <laughs> it's a question of the moment. Will it come off or will it have to be pried? I'm going to say, given my experience with the exhaust manifold bolts, this is going to lift off. You may have differing opinions based on your experience, but I'm going to come in and try to keep my dirty, dirty hands away from the throttle bores. You ready? Three, 
two, one. Oh yeah, factory freshness right there. Um, it smells oily, actually, that's fuel. Uh, I don't know that we've got very much oil down in there. I don't really have a good place to set this thing. <laughs> Rag, you shall serve me well, friend. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Do we have a leaking plenum cover? I'm gonna say no. Let's see what you say. Just a, I mean, there's like some sludge. You can't really see anything. You see that? Like, this is not that bad, really. It looks like some has broken free and gotten into the beloved kegger. But uh, I'm telling you, that ain't bad. So keep in mind, the truck only, only has 50-some-odd um, thousand miles. But keep in mind, it's also 20 years old. And it's not like it sat for 10 years or anything crazy. I drive it all the time. It's just you live in a small town, you know, your college is nearby, your schools were nearby when you could drive to school, work is nearby, all the stores you go to are nearby. Longest jaunts, you know, like 10, 15 miles sometimes, <laughs> and twice a day, so uh, I'd say that's pretty impressive. So, you know, typically it's like 60, 65,000 seems when people were reporting these. Something that irks me right here, note the max torque. If you can kind of see that it's underneath there uh, 12 foot-pounds okay wouldn't that have been nice to have up here okay like you know firing order yeah I kind of get that I, it's in my head it hadn't changed much but you had space to put it <laughs> like no one's ever gonna see that unless they pull the intake manifold I guess that's their logic but anywho uh, with the throttle body gone that frees up a lot of space uh, there she is right there. Again, I'm going to get these three bolts back in before we forget what we were doing with them. That will allow me now to get this bracket out of the way. Let's fasten the Astro back. I don't want to knock any of that dirt in there. But see, now we can kind of get this out of the way. We can work more with these connections, see what's going on. I have no clue. I'm assuming that clip comes off. But again, that's foreign to me. It's not like anything I deal with in old cars or any of the modern crud I have done. So uh, we're going to figure that out, get that out of our way. And then essentially the fuel rails are four bolts right there. You got one and two, kind of back right there. And then three, sort of by my IAC blue sticker. And then we've got four underneath the map sensor. So conveniently, the two masking tape pieces highlight the bolts there. And then here, you've got one and two. All those do are holding the fuel rails on. Do not forget, we have not bled the fuel pressure. We want to keep that in mind. I also want to clean this up before anything happens. It's just, uh, you know, uh, good habits die hard. It's not just always old habits. It's a good habit to have. So we're going to make do with that. And I uh, might... Tempted to fab up a cover, but I don't know if I have time. Uh, there's uh, The Last Dance about the Bulls Dynasty. Uh, premieres tonight here at 8 o'clock. And I might go throw something in the oven. <laughs> we get to see the start of it. But the goal is to have this done and to eat and watch that. So we'll see if we can get the trifecta just like the Bulls did. Two, three peats, right? But I'm going to clean this. We'll make some more headway. And I will catch back with you. All right, with the dust removed from around the throttle body bores, I think I've done this right, but I'm not sure because, again, I've never dealt with it. I've got a flat blade screwdriver here. And I press down on a top detent. You can't really tell it's a detent because it's through the bracket. And then there's one on the bottom. And my hope is that we press that and that happens. Beautiful. So again, I uh, don't know if that's proper, but it seems to work without breaking anything. So that frees the bracket from that point. Now we can actually swing the whole thing over here because that's where all this mess is. Throttle cable again runs through here and then the cruise control stuff goes over there. If I can tuck it in somewhere by the master cylinder, we're, we're doing good. So uh, that's what I'm going to do and we will uh, be back shortly. All right, so a couple of things. First, tape that off so we don't have any dirt drop down. Second, I really wanted to just disconnect right there at this connection. That didn't seem to want to be happening. I hadn't messed much with vacuum connections like that. So I went for what I was familiar with, which would be this right there. And what that's going to allow me to do is keep that intact, figure out what's going on back there at a later date and time. But now all of this can come free with these brackets and head over that direction. Get out of sight, get out of mind. That's finally opened up access to that intake bolt. And then this, again, like I said, we can kind of slide out of our way. <laughs> but uh, it should also be pretty easy to figure out what we were doing because, again, that's going to come up here. We've got the connection to plug into the manifold. We're going to have a connection for another line, and there's going to be one. So 
Uh, that's sort of where we stand at this point in time. I think I'm about ready to have to crawl out of here to get the throttle body to safe space. And uh, then we'll probably try to bleed the valve, the fuel line I should say. And uh, I'll make sure to grab some safety glasses before we do that. But uh, Coming along pretty good here I gotta say, so we will uh, be checking back in just a little bit. Alright, it's so a little update for you. I had to run inside to start my dinner. <laughs> and, uh, when I crawled back in, I got my safety glasses, got some other stuff I thought we'd need. And I uh, went ahead, I bled the valve, uh, depressed it, tried to get all the fuel out. I expected a massive squirt. I guess the truck has sat long enough, there wasn't really anything much left into it. I got a small puddle on the sock, the smell of fuel, and that was it. That's why that rag is perfectly spotless and not even damp. So, with that said, uh, we ensured that we don't have built up fuel pressure we could come in and we could take the fuel rails off and try to pull the injectors that said i also think we could pull the entire intake manifold we've kind of cleaned things out of our way granted you can't tell on that side so what i've got set up here i've got a 3 8 breaker bar uh, these shouldn't be torqued down too tight uh, you will need the extra length as best i can tell You've got your first bolt here on the passenger side right there, kind of in line with your thermostat housing. Second one is going to be right here. And then you're going to have the bungs for the fuel injectors. That would be cylinders two and four. Bolt number three is going to be right down there. Bolt number four on the passenger side will be right there. Bolt five, I don't... You can kind of see it. I mean, it's, it's right back there at the tip of my finger uh, behind cylinder six and eight fuel injectors. Going again, I think way back there. Let me drop the light down so you can have a better chance of seeing her. Way at the very, very back, like in the in the deep dark crevice that you can't even see, there's a sixth bolt. So I can assume we're gonna have six over here. There would be number one, uh, line it up with the front edge of the motor. Number two, again mirroring what we saw on the other side, right in front of the fuel injector bungs, this time one and three. In the middle, we're gonna have one right on the flip side of cylinder three. I don't really have the third hand that I'm using right now. So, let me try to make do. <laughs> Stuff down in there underneath that rag, we'd have another one. I still need to pull those vacuum lines and the fuel line, forgot about that. Uh, then we're gonna have the next one. You get the idea, there will be six on this side. I can't really show them, but they're there. So I'm gonna get started on uh, getting that side dismantled, pull everything. I wanna go ahead and put the Schrader valve cap back on just in the event that we were to lose it ever. So anyway, I will get on this and uh, I will catch you when we should be breaking this thing free. All right, so no issues here. You can see we've got the fuel line. Uh, we popped the uh, cover off, had to come off the back side first. I've got a rag stuffed in there just for safety. Uh, then we've got the port entering the fuel rail down in the middle of that mess right there. You can see my yellow quick disconnect again for 5 16 lines. Uh, what we're ready to do now, I've gone ahead, I've got that clamp pulled back, the gray one on the vacuum line. Again, top port vacuum line is going to run to the brake booster. The bottom port is going to kind of be more of an S shape and it's going to go to the PCV. Important we document that once more, but get that out of my way. Should have access to the bolts. We'll probably have a fun time getting back there. There's quite a bit of height though, and again, these aren't super tight, so hopefully it won't be too bad on us. Okay, interesting notes I want to make uh, sure I mention just for my future reference more than anything. Maybe some of you will find the same thing. Passenger side over here. Bolts were fairly tight. This front one in particular was, it was torqued. It was really solid. Coming in over here, these ones on the driver's side, particularly kind of around cylinders one and three, uh, they have been, they've been pretty, I mean, I'm not going to say they were loose. It's not like I could have broke them free with my fingertips or something, but there wasn't much torque on them, especially compared to a couple over here. But I uh, also wanted to stress, this is, I believe, a 12-inch extension. It's what I was going to town with up here. It makes real easy work of everything. You could probably use it back there. It just gets cumbersome because there's so much junk. You've got uh, heater hoses. You've got, you know, your throttle valve cables, dipsticks. I've dropped it down. What I'm using now is just, I believe, the 3-inch with the deep socket. Fits really well. I'm just breaking these free. Then we'll come in and spin them loose with the uh, ratchet. Similarly, over here, I'm going to have to... I'm hoping I can pry this vacuum line uh, with the flat blade, you know, and I'm like in a better angle. If not, we're going to have to remove the fuel rails, which is stupid, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to just get it freed that way. So I'll continue working there. We'll be back with the progress.
All right, it's a little bit before 8 o'clock. We're technically to our stopping point, but I think I'm going to go ahead and rip this off. Uh, I didn't get in quite on time, so the dinner won't be ready until a little bit after 8. But all the bolts are out on this side. We're going to start. This would be the passenger side, 1 through 6. You can see, I'm thinking these probably tuck into the water jacket, uh, the first one right there. Probably the back one as well. The others just kind of look like a combination of fuel and oil. Coming in over here, this is the driver's side, we've got one through six. And that one again gummed up really bad, just like what we saw on the passenger side. Note though, two, three, and four look just the same, kind of fuel, oil, whatever it might be. Five, it definitely has some oil on it. If there was anything coming into the plenum, I'm thinking it would be from that cylinder. Uh, also, or cylinder banks, kind of depends how it's divided out on the kegger. And then right there, the back one, same thing. I'm thinking that's probably water jacket. So uh, that said, we ran into a couple issues. Number one, these stupid clips. I just, I'm not familiar with them. We waste a ton of time on plastic clips. I try not to break them, I guess is a real issue. But like right here, we've got this harness. I would like to get the harness out of here. There's the stud from the valve cover where my finger is. And it's just some sort of a clip, but it's not like anything I use on old cars where I would have like a cushion clamp that would come down and I would just thread a nut on on top of that. I'm not sure what's going on here. I can't really get an angle to see it. Uh, if I come to this point, you can kind of see we don't have to get it gone, you know, and there is a lot of gunk there. It's just it would be easier for me to clean that up uh, prior to pulling the manifold if I could remove them. Uh, that said, it's not something we have to do right now. Coming in back there by that green spot, we've got another thing where we're tied off to a stud. And again, they're just not clamps I'm familiar with. I'm sure if you work with them all the time, you know, it's like a two second type of a disconnect situation. But for me, I don't have a clue what they are and then I can't see them to understand how they're functioning. Over here on the uh, driver's side though, we ran into something a little bit more important. Now this uh, is a harness wire for the fuel injection. But right here, coming out of this main harness that runs all through here, we've got this clip and it's got, uh, looks to be what, three wires? Uh, kind of orange black and maybe purple with a white tracer and it goes into that funky looking thing <laughs> right there and then the issue is there's another wire harness that pops out and I can't really even see it it's you can see the connector there it's it's black it looks white but that's a label behind it is a black connector I can't get to that I don't know maybe we'll be back there a crank position sensor maybe uh, I'm not 100% sure, but we do want to make note of this in video purposes because this will be ridiculously hard to label. I can tell you that harness coming out is like three wires stranded together. It is not like this front one. The good news is the front one, we just press the clip, pull it out. But I wanted to get that documented. I'll take a picture. And then in terms of will the intake come off without any trouble? Well, thermostat housing, I left it. There's your answer. <laughs> we should be home free unless there's something back there I don't know about. But I'm going to try to get this thing out of here because that was my goal. And uh, should we pull it off, I'll show you the end result. Well, we beat our deadline. This is one of those things I don't advise. But when you work solo, I don't have anyone to hand this to. And uh, subsequently, I'm in the engine bay. I have to get out of the engine bay. I found a balance point. Uh, it's just leaking a little bit of oil that will get off. <laughs> Nothing too major. But there she is. That is the kegger, and she is absurdly big. You can now see back there the distributor, the crank position sensor, all those connectors I was worried about. I just said, screw it. I don't think we're going to interfere. Got everything out of the way, pulled it up. Uh, we can now see down into the lifter valley. Again, the plenum plate on the underside of this kegger. That's what's notorious for blowing the gasket out. Aluminum, steel. They don't mix well with heat cycles. Uh, so that's what you have, you know, with your plenum repair kit. You basically get an aluminum plate so you don't have the uh, warpage between the heat contrast between the metals. That said, we're not going to do that. We're going to do something even better, even crazier. <laughs> and so I'm going to try to get that covered up before I go in. I would feel terrible if I didn't. But I think we're pretty well done here. So I've got a uh, piece of plywood over there with some cardboard. I'm going to set this down. That way I don't have to deal with cleaning it tonight or anything like that. And I don't have to feel bad for staining my floor because I won't. Unless it bleeds through, which it could, but it probably won't. And uh, this is, that's how you get your intake off. So the main thing, label your sensors. Take your time. Uh, try your best. You know, if you face any bolts that seem like they're going to break, try to try to rethink and strategize. Worst thing you could do is break one off. That would really make for a bad time for you. Particularly if you're not doing like a full rebuild type of a thing. But we've got the intake off. 
uh, we'll kind of pick up here. We now will have access points for me to connect, you know, my cherry picker to. Uh, but before we do that, we'll probably want to go underneath. That's why that little transmission jack was there. Want to support the tranny. We're gonna get everything squared away. But uh, with that said, I think I'm gonna clean up, call it a night, get in, eat my supper, watch a uh, watch a throwback to the the Bulls dynasties in the 90s. So I uh, do hope you enjoyed. I do hope this helps you out. Again, many different ways to do this. This is the route I decided to take and it's working for me. So with that said, thanks for watching. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can always catch us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All three are at Lone Star Mopars. Again, I opted here to leave the rails in place. As you can see, worked just fine. Zero issues. There's the actual plenum plate there. <laughs> but, uh, with that that said, I'm going to, like I said, clean up, call it a night, and I will catch you back here as we continue on.